create or be consumed. This is something I learned the hard way as a creative person who grew up online. The last few years have been especially challenging as I struggled through a combination of lockdown, graduating college, and getting suddenly flung into the adult world where it feels like if you don't work, you die. I've always loved art, television, anime, movies, fandom, and games, but in this period, I had started to use them to distract myself from how cold and confusing the world had suddenly become. There were no longer sources of inspiration and connection, but rather the source of mindless distraction. I'm sure some of you can relate. If it isn't quick hits of dopamine from shorts that are fed to you like your cattle, it's the underlying simmering climate of outrage, fear, and inadequacy. And so to escape those feelings, I immerse myself in other things, fictional stories, fictional characters, spending entire days and weeks of my life in their world instead of my own. I filled my head with other people's words, other people's creations. And when I made art, it didn't feel like mine. I drew things for fandoms, for clients, for engagements. And I said over and over again, I would draw for myself, but I just didn't know what that meant anymore. What kind of art do I make? What do I want to say? What do I care about? Who even am I? So yeah, some pretty classic thoughts for an early to mid 20 year old who just discovered that they can no longer be defined by their academic success. So how do we get out of this loop of constantly consuming other people's content and never producing anything that feels good to us? Well, one thing that's really important to note for creative people especially is that the mode that you create with whatever you make, whether it's drawing or writing or music or whatever, that is your way of processing the things that you experience, the things that you see and learn and feel. If you're constantly inundating yourself with content from other people and you're not giving yourself an outlet to process what is actually important to you and what you actually think and feel about those things, all of that is going to like start building up and becoming static inside your head. It's going to start bogging you down, clogging your creative arteries, so to say. So making stuff, it's something you kind of have to do in order to keep yourself sane. It's like maintenance mode for a creative person, right? You need to start shifting your mindset to seek things instead of avoid things. Let me give you an example, like quitting social media, detoxing, quitting games. You can do all that, but that's still moving away from something. You're not identifying anything you're moving towards. If you identify what it is you want to move towards, then you may not need to quit anything at all because they will just become a non-issue. All right, so let's talk about the phone and social media use first. We don't need to quit it. We just need to make sure that the things we consume from those places are actually like quality things that we intend to consume and are not going to clog our creative arteries. Take this as a sign to reevaluate the social media that you're using right now and what kind of content you're consuming. I use Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Reddit sometimes and Discord quite a lot. So I'm going to talk about those, but these things I'm going to talk about can be applied to basically anything you use. If you want to learn more about this idea, I suggest you listen to some Cal Newport podcast or read his book, Digital Minimalism, because the ideas are very similar. Right. So first of all, you have to go in with a goal. You have to tell yourself, what is the reason I'm using the social media for? I'm using Twitter to see art and get inspired and keep up with people that I know. If my timeline is showing me things that are not art, are not from people I know, and that are not inspiring me, then it's got to go. And you've got to be really aggressive about this. First thing to note is that I don't use Twitter on the app. I only use the web version because on web, if you use Chrome, you can download this extension called Calm Twitter and it will hide this sidebar, which is really distracting. Um, it'll also hide all the numbers, which is amazing. It will help you to only focus on the art. My, my feed is pretty good right now because it's highly curated. It's people that I'm following. Um, it's posts that I like to see, some ORV fan art. Every time I'm scrolling on Twitter, anytime I see a tweet that I'm just like, where did this come from? Who did this come from? Who put this on my timeline? If someone's retweeting a bunch of stuff I don't like, I will just immediately turn off retweets for that person. 
Like, they don't get another chance. Leonardo DiCaprio just switched to Yahoo. Literally, who cares? Who are you? I've gotta say, not interested in this post. This post isn't relevant. Um, Genshin posts really distracting. I gotta get rid of those, to be honest. Um, I also mute words like crazy, and I also uh, mute accounts like crazy, even if we mutuals. Like, we might be mutuals, and I like being mutuals with you, but your tweets are too good. Unfortunately, your tweets are too good, they're too distracting. I want to keep seeing your cool tweets, so I have to mute you or else I'll just stay on Twitter for the rest of my life. So I mute certain people that tweet a lot that I'm friends with, sorry. I also mute... Okay, I muted Elon. Of course we have to mute Elon. We have to mute words that I don't want to see on my timeline, like Genshin. Um, I love seeing Genshin. But I don't really want to do that much more fan art. I want to focus on original stuff. So seeing so much fan art and like fun content in my timeline makes me think that I must make that sort of thing. So I have to mute that sort of thing. I mute trends like Squid Game. I mute uh, political words because we are on Twitter for art. Basically any trends that I feel pressured to do or buzzwords that could get me doom scrolling, I mute all of them. For YouTube, it's the same. I have this extension for YouTube called Distraction Free YouTube that I sometimes use if I'm feeling really hardcore, but basically it has options to like hide all the recommended videos so you're just using YouTube to search things. Ideally, you curate your front page as well. So you train YouTube into showing you the things that you want to see. And if I see stuff that I don't care, I'm just I just remove them and hopefully YouTube starts to learn that I don't care. <sighs> A lot of stuff I don't care about. Unfortunately on YouTube you can't mute words so I have to do this manually. And also if I see a video that I really want to watch but I just don't have time right now and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, I have been really <laughs> abusing the watch later function. So any video that I really actually want to watch later I'll just put here. Now I know. I'm not gonna lose this video. I can find it later, but I don't have to watch it right now. So if your YouTube front page starts looking like this, it's a good sign because you're training YouTube to show you what you want to see. For Instagram, it's a little harder. I don't have that much trouble with Instagram. I feel like I don't really get distracted on here as much. Only thing is that I really wish there was an option to just get rid of reels entirely because I really- they don't need to be there, man. Something that I also started doing on Instagram is I started to mute people's stories who I don't really care about. So I try to keep my stories uh, to only people that I'm friends with, to people that I've met in real life and have talked to personally. If it's like people that I don't even recognize the username to, it's like, why am I looking at your story? I don't know who you are. I'm just going to mute it so that I don't have like an extra shiny thing to click on. Obviously, also, unfollow people you don't care about. That should go without saying. So yeah, basically just try to curate your apps for quality. Something I've also been trying lately is uh, figure out what to do with Discord. Because Discord is really distracting for me. And I'll often just like keep it open or keep looking at it or just keep checking. Even though I know literally nothing is going on here. It's almost like a compulsive behavior. I'm like, I don't know what to do now, so I'm gonna click on Discord and see if there's anything new. So to stop this compulsive behavior, what I've done is... I created another Discord account. So this one is specifically for productivity. When I'm working, I log into this account and use this account only. And this is still a work in progress. I'm trying to figure out the best way to use Discord as a productivity home base. So what this is really doing is it's letting my brain know, yeah, you can still check on Discord when you have that compulsive need to click on this. But when you do open Discord, there's not going to be any chats. There's not going to be any servers. It's going to start rewriting my brain to understand that Discord doesn't give me dopamine. <laughs> Discord is here for me to be productive. And this is kind of the common thread between all of these social media. You just want to start rewriting them. Like you can still use them, you can still click on them, but they're just going to redirect you into your goals rather than take you out of them. So if you do that, hopefully that helps mitigate the amount of junk food and crap going into your veins. 
and the things you're eating online are a little bit more healthy, a little bit more nutritious. And of course this goes without saying, but go touch grass, have experiences in real life because real life is the best food for the artist. But I mean, it's not everything. You can live every day having a lot of experiences, but still not know how to process them. You know, you could be like me and be a shut-in and make art about being a shut-in. So that's also valid. <laughs> you don't have to go out, um, but do know that art comes from experience. Like art that connects with other people anyway. The next step is to figure out what you actually care about making. And this is really hard, um, but if you are an artist and you make stuff, you've gotta have made stuff that you thought was like super cool and genuine before, right? Maybe it was years ago, but there was a point in time where you actually cared about what you were making. So what we need to do is really identify those pieces and why those felt real to you and how is that different from the work you're making right now? And how do we bring more of that you essence into your future art? This will differ uh, person to person because I think some people know exactly what they want to make and have a pretty easy time expressing themselves in that way. But for me, it became harder and harder these past few years. And I don't think it was ever that easy for me. It's always been a pretty conscious struggle about like, what am I supposed to be making? I think especially if you've decided that you don't want to do art as a hobby, you really want to do it professionally and you start pursuing skill, technique, and career opportunities, it's really easy to lose sight of why you started doing art in the first place. So this section is for those of you who are like that, <laughs> like me. So let's see. So what I've done to try to explain this to you is I've created a timeline of all the art I've posted online from 2014 to 2023. Jesus Christ, it's been nine years. That's crazy. So my goal with this is to find which pieces in everything I've made and shared have I felt was the most genuine to me. Uh, right off the bat, I would say that things before this point, like before 2017, that was when I was in high school. I was not worried about learning my fundamentals or making this a career. So everything back here was pretty good. I was doing this for a hobby. I was doing it for fun. I was drawing my original characters, my original stories. And then college starts and I was an art major. So of course I had to go prove myself. In 2018, I did make one piece that I was particularly proud of. And it is this one right here. This one feels very real to me because I was able to express a scene from a story I'd written pretty similarly to how I saw it in my head. And this character is a representation of me and the story is also, you know, it's a self-insert story. I was emo. I was writing stories about my life. Okay, so this is a pretty autobiographical piece. 2019, we drew a lot, but none of it felt the same as that piece I just talked about. I felt like I was searching, searching, searching for something. I didn't know what it was, but I was making a lot of art at that time, getting better about my skills and stuff. Uh, 2020, the piece that stood out to me here was this one. Once again, because it was a technical achievement and I was able to express the scene from my head of two original characters. And I was pretty glad to see that people were able to connect with these characters, even though they had no idea who these people were. Here I was getting better at my technical skills. 2021, I drew a lot and I didn't draw anything that was particularly true to who I was. I drew a lot of fan art. I started doing art in a style that was popular online. And then 2022, I would say this piece stood out quite a lot. This comic I made about uh, Ayato and Toma from Genshin Impact. Just because I dove really deep into their characters and spent a long time writing the script and thumbnailing, storyboarding the pages, making sure that this story would be able to impact people in the way that I wanted it to. And it indeed did get that result. So I was very happy to be able to work hard on something and for it to have the result and impact on the audience that it did. And then the very last piece of that year, this comic here, one of my favorite things I've ever done still. This was something that was in my head for a long time. It is autobiographical. I wanted to depict a pretty complicated like character arc I was having at that time. And I felt like this was something a lot of people could relate to. And I was really happy about the response it got because it is original, but it seemed like it could touch a lot of people. 
And then 2023, this year, I would say is this comic again. A comic about me meeting my favorite character. The subject is a little embarrassing, but I think that's exactly why I wanted to make a comic about it. Because I know other people feel this way, and I wanted to give some respect towards the relationship between a person and their favorite character, because there is something special there. So zooming out, in the past five years, one, two, three, four, five, I've made exactly five things that I thought, yes, this is what I want to make as an artist. This feels really fulfilling. I'm connecting with people in the way I want to connect with them. It doesn't mean that the things I did in between all those are useless because we are multifaceted people. We're going to make a lot of different type of art that all kind of feel a little bit genuine to us, but there are those specific pieces that are gonna stand out to you. One thing that I kept thinking about when I was going through this is that it's pretty common advice to say things like, don't do so much fan art, don't follow trends, stop caring about numbers. I mean, sometimes those things are important, so you should sometimes care about them. But even if you stop doing those things, it doesn't solve the issue of you not knowing what kind of art really fulfills you, which is why you're doing all this like fan art and random stuff, right? Because I mean, first of all, doing stuff like this takes a lot of time, emotional, mental energy too. So even if it is fulfilling, sometimes we do have to just like draw some doodles here and there that aren't that serious. But always remember that like, this is who you are as an artist. So we need to direct our practice back towards this sort of place. All right, so we've talked about controlling our media intake. We've talked about how to find out what kind of art you really want to make. The last thing I want to discuss is actually making that stuff. Because you can theoretically know a lot of stuff, but when it comes down to doing the thing, you can totally fail at that last crucial point. Like when it's time to sit down and do the art, do you feel yourself getting pulled away? Like you would rather pick up your phone. So the idea here is that you should probably redefine your goals. You should make sure that drawing feels better than watching anime, than going on Twitter. Drawing should feel better than all of that. And the way to make drawing feel better and to feel good is to understand how to make yourself get into flow. So the goal is not to finish anything, to make anything specific. The goal whenever you start to draw should be to achieve flow. And that is the state where you can work on anything you won't get tired, you won't get hungry, you're just like singularly invested and interested in the work that you're doing. You've probably been in flow before, maybe when you were a kid or the last time you created something you were really passionate about. So you know what you're like in that state. Uh, try to recreate those conditions for yourself. Some common things that work for me anyway is that I notice that when I'm in flow, a lot of times I'm not listening to anything. It's not intentional, but when I get really interested in what I'm doing, I snap out of it and I realize that there's just silence. I'm not listening to podcasts or music or anything. And I'm like, wow, so I can survive without <laughs> some rando talking in my ear. The second thing is that to achieve flow, you have to choose your battles very wisely. You can't choose to do something that is too easy and you can't choose to do something that is way too hard. Most times when I start wanting to get distracted, it's because what I'm doing is too easy. I just get bored. I'm like, I could do this on autopilot. I do not need to focus right now. We just need to get through this. And that is some parts of the artistic process, you know, like filling in flat colors. You do not need to be concentrated for that really. But also like, that's really pointless, you know? Why are you doing something you're bored of? You're already drawing, you might as well be interested in it. Of course, you do not want to choose something that is way too ambitious or else you're never going to be able to achieve it in the way that you want to. So you want to be able to find something that will give you incremental little rewards, little problems to solve that are very solvable if you just try. This way, you're constantly being rewarded for your efforts and learning new things and you will become interested in what you're doing again. So your mission now is to unfollow people you don't care about, mute words, mute accounts, make your social media into a place that is genuinely enriching for you, and then go figure out 
what kind of art you do that is actually the most fulfilling to you. And then sit down and do that art and do it over and over and over again, because this is a process. But as long as you're aware that this is a problem that you want to solve, I have complete faith that you'll be able to solve it. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting the stuff I do. If you'd like to support videos like this, all my links are in the description below.